Hello everyone, welcome back to my workbench up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway. I acquired this Hornby Class 50 second hand relatively recently, not long before the Acura scale announcement in fact. It's one of Hornby's earlier releases, I had been looking for one for a while, and researched the Mazak rot situation which affected some of the early releases. I haven't found any reports of this specific model with that issue, so I hope this one will be in the clear. Before we start taking this apart to DCC fit, let's confirm that it works properly on DC first. There are signs of it having been messed about with already, the couplers are hanging down too low. It looks like it has Backman style cranked couplers fitted instead of the Hornby straight ones. That's an easy fix, these are NEM pockets and can be swapped over easily. It is working on DC. The body is secured with four clips, one above the bogey each side. It's a little more complicated than normal to get off because these grills are recessed into the chassis and the body has to slide off straight or they will bind. I found it easier to take the harder looking end off first, the other one slid off easily. The circuit board looks surprisingly complicated for something with only a tail light to its name. This is an 8 pin chip I've pulled from another loco. I don't know exactly what brand it is, but it was working in that one, so it'll do fine for testing here. By the way, if anyone knows a shop which has Zimo 21 pin decoders in stock at the moment, do let me know. I've run out of these and I need more. Onto the programming track it goes. Auto detect the decoder and... Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We've seen the loco work. I know the decoder works because it came out of a working model. Switching this track to layout power shows an immediate short circuit. It's clearly this loco as the short goes away when I lift it off the track. At this point I went and did some research. Turns out this is a design fault in some early Hornby Class 50s. They short circuit the track when DCC fitted. Years ago, Hornby were offering a replacement circuit board for these as a warranty item, but they've long since run out of those. The internet also suggested a specific Class 56 part would also fit and work, but these are also sold out now from the usual spares suppliers. With no source of a replacement PCB, my thoughts turned to creating one. I can get PCBs made through my channel sponsor PCBWay, who you should definitely check out if you need PCBs made. It is surprisingly affordable to get a small number of custom PCBs created, and you can get the intricate shape that this model requires cut in the factory so it would fit in the stock location. You can even get the edge connectors created to use the same wire retention clips so you could have a truly factory appearance on your new PCB. Check out PCBWay for all your rapid prototyping needs, there is a link in the description below. While reproducing the shape of this PCB exactly in the design software would be a little bit of a challenge, it could easily be done. I would also need a circuit diagram to create. I could go and get a class 56 and copy that directly. Or I could try something different. There seems to be a lot on here that I probably don't need. Time to analyse exactly what this is doing. The main issues with early Hornby 8-pin DCC locos is they wired the lights common negative rather than common positive. This is a historical anomaly because to Hornby the lights came first and the DCC socket came along later. 
Hornby had already created a constant brightness lighting circuit for DC with a capacitor charged from a bridge rectifier and switching the lights on and off from track power using transistors. They looped the transistor controls through the DCC socket and called it good. Only it didn't work. Most DCC decoders have protection diodes in them and there's now a connection between the rails via the bridge rectifier and the DCC chip's protection diode. When working out what a PCB like this does, remember to look on both sides of the board. Also look for places where one side connects to the other. As well as a dedicated via connection, this can also be where a component leg is. It's not uncommon to have a trace leading away from a component on both sides of the board. Also look out for traces that go between the two legs of a component without touching either. This is really common too. If you are enjoying this video or finding it useful, hit the like button. If you have a question, comment or suggestion, drop it down below. Having mapped out most of this circuit and determined that it is to run the lights at a constant brightness on DC, I don't think I need most of it. DCC already handled constant brightness lighting as it has full track voltage all the time. I wonder if I can pull enough stuff off of this PCB to properly disconnect the lighting circuit from the track and have it work properly on DCC. This is greatly assisted by this loco not having a headlight. There's only one light at each end, the tail light. I don't actually have common negative lighting in this model, as there's just two wires and one LED at each end, with no common anything. Should I fit a head code light or a cab light later, I can choose how to common these in with the tail lights, and I can do this the correct way around for DCC. With enough of the circuit mapped out from the DCC socket forwards and from the front and rear connections backwards, I have come up with a plan. If I disconnect enough of the circuitry in the middle, I think I can jump a wire across and run the LEDs directly from the DCC decoder without any of this stuff in the middle. Then if I connect the wires to the LED the other way around, it should work. I've decided to remove all the transistors, diodes and capacitors. There are also some resistors that could probably go too. They were used to limit the transistor base current before. But I'm not going to bother removing them yet, as they will be fully disconnected from everything in this installation. You've seen me make an absolute hash of removing components from a PCB previously, and ripped into me for it in the comments. So, I'll take the camera battery dying here as a sign that you didn't need to see this again, and we'll jump to the modified circuit board. I have two jumper connections between the lighting outputs and the lights. I'm making sure there are no remaining connections between the track and the lighting circuit, or the motor and the lighting circuit, using a multimeter on the continuity setting. There's a pinout diagram and testing plan for this on the DCC wiki, which gives a full set of tests required. This has passed the continuity test successfully, so I'm confident I've not messed anything up which would damage a DCC decoder. With this tested out, it's now time to refit the DCC decoder and test the loco functionality to confirm there are no remaining shorts and see if the lights now work. Aha, that's working. Time for the real decoder to go in and to give it a test run. The decoder wiring is getting in the way of the body going back on. Make sure the wires are routed cleanly and aren't trapped or pulled when refitting the body.
Note to self, I still need to fix those couplings. Onto the test track and let's see what happens. Lights on. And that didn't go the way I expected. I've got the lights wired up to the wrong function outputs. We're getting red lights at the front and nothing at the back. DCC decoder out and let's swap the wires over. Hmm, this one really doesn't want to go back in. Let's try the other one. That went in really easily. I guess I need to clean up the first one. Here is the final version of the modified circuit board. These are the two wires I have added and the existing hole locations I used to connect through. The red and black wires to the lights also needed swapping around. If you have one of these models with a headlight as well, I suspect that would require more modification to the end PCBs to change from common negative to common positive. That's better, the red lights come on at the rear this time. As there are no front lights on this model, I'm not expecting any white lights at the front. That will require additional LEDs in the head code box to fix, and that's a later problem that I'm not looking to address today. I don't have a continuous run or rolling road to test this loco at the moment. So I took this down to a local model railway club to let it stretch its legs for a bit. That's running very nicely. That's running very nicely now, quite the transformation from causing a dead short at the beginning of the video, it's now hauling full trains with ease. See you next time, up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.